Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a discussion topic I want to share with everybody. Uh, the topic of discussion today is what does it mean when someone says a knife has a perfect detent? What does that mean? I like to cater to new people. I remember being new in this knife world. I remember certain terms seeming very broad and very foggy, not having a lot of definition to them, uh, but they would get thrown around a lot. And I was always like, what does that mean? I mean, if I'm gonna drop a bunch of money on a knife, uh, you know, how do I know that what I'm getting is what they're describing? That can be confusing. If you've never been to my channel before, um, I generally like to lay out a bunch of knives that I use as examples, and then I like to talk about it. So I'm, I, I'm not really big on editing, I just kinda like to talk. Uh, that's my style. So I've got a bunch of different examples laid out. I'm gonna do my best to describe what people are saying, um, and then what it actually means, right? Uh, and it, it should, I mean, ultimately the goal here is to help new people understand. If you've been around for a long time, you know, you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, or you've just been in the knife game for a while, uh, this information isn't gonna be super helpful for you. It might be just something you can sit back and, and enjoy. I've got knives laid out that uh, have no detent. Um, I've got knives laid out that have heavy or weak detent that are uh, expensive or inexpensive. Something that's really important to remember is that a perfect detent is not something that is specifically exclusive to a high price tier. It is something that is absolutely obtainable in all price tiers now, which it didn't used to be that way. It used to be that really great detents on a manual knife uh, were only accessible in, you know, you had to spend some money, right? So this is, a, it's interesting now that um, we have, a, we're in a different knife world. Uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some of these cool stickers and other benefits, there's of course a link right down in the description. You're supporting me in the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Um, okay. So a couple of examples here. First off, what, what does that mean? What is detent? Well, let's take a look at this uh, XM18 three and a half inch. By the way, you can pick up my flashlight down in the description as well. Um, you can see in here right underneath the tang, uh, it, right attached to the lock bar, you see that little ball in there? Uh, that little ball is the detent ball. And on the blade, there's a track where it, once, the, um, fr the, once the lock actually engages, the tang, there's a little track. You can almost see it's just like a little a track that, that ball follows. And right there, that little indentation is actually the detent hole. Once the ball engages the detent hole, snap, it snaps into place. So that ball is ideally, it's sitting in that hole in a way um, that allows the knife to deploy once you build up some force back here. So on the XM18, XM18 is not known for having an ideally shaped flipper tab, which I think is certainly a part of it on flippers, well, the, the um, deployment mechanism certainly has a lot to do with how people judge the detent or the action. The action certainly is something that people throw in there as well, whether they realize it or not. But essentially, you know, while I'm building up force back here to deploy the knife, um, that detent ball, like how deep it is and how firmly it's fitting, will determine how much force you need to build up back here and at what angle, you know, the angle differs before the uh, detent breaks and the blade is deployed. If it's done correctly, it won't be so hard that you're every single time, right? But it'll be hard enough that there's enough force built up back here to release the blade. This is a manually operating knife. I grew up, uh, you know, being, you know, really interested initially in assisted knives, knives like the Kershaw Blur. By the way, knives that uh, are laid out here that are actually available, I will provide links right down in the description so you guys can actually pick them up if you feel compelled to. It does support the channel. If you guys decide to do that, so that's great. If not, that's okay too. Uh, the Kershaw Blur is an assisted knife. It doesn't need a perfectly tuned detent in order to deploy. It simply is going to deploy. So why wouldn't we all just use assisted knives or automatic knives? Well, because they generally have more parts. There's a reason that you see manually operated knives in a lot, like most of the high-end knife world are manually operated folding knives. Um, and that's because the idea is, is that there are fewer parts. This has a torsion bar, sometimes it's a coil spring in there, and if that fails and there's no backup detent system, which is often the case with an assisted or automatic knife, then the knife is rendered inoperable. Um, so oftentimes people who spend more money will opt for a knife that has a detent system because essentially 
a good detents, especially like on this flipper knife, for example, will deploy the knife exactly the same way without the need for a spring. It's also a lot more satisfying if you've never handled a well-tuned detents on a nice knife, whether it's an inexpensive or expensive knife, there is an odd satisfaction that comes with a perfectly tuned detent. Same thing, like I said, with automatic knives. This is a Protex Strider SNG switchblade. You push a button and it fires. It doesn't necessarily need a detent. You just push, the, it's not really the same setup. You push a button and the, the blade's under tension, right? In an OTF, this is a Combat Troodon from Microtech. Uh, this is a double action, so the tension to throw the blade, it's actually, the, the spring's in there, or I'm sorry, the, there's one spring in here, it is slightly under tension right now, but you create additional tension by, or the strings, uh, the spring stretches as you push this switch up, and then once you get past a certain point, the spring throws the blade, and then the exact same thing happens in reverse as you pull the switch back down, so it doesn't necessarily need a detent. Nice, automatic, right, convenient, but if that system were to fail, which truthfully it is very unlikely, then you have a blade that doesn't work, right? I have some other oddball kind of setups uh, that I was gonna point out here. Um, let's take the Ritter Hogue, for example. This isn't necessarily, in fact, it's not a traditional detent ball setup. You have excess friction that is created by the curvature of the tang of this blade uh, rubbing up against this axis bar right here. So as it wheels around, there's this little spot right here where there's a maximum amount of friction or tension. And so when you throw this blade, it's a totally different experience versus one that has a detent setup, right? So this is a variance of what I'm talking about. There are a million other examples that I could lay out here and, and use to explain for you guys, but just to explain, you know, not, not all these knives have a detent setup. It really just depends on what it is. It also depends on, it d depends on the, uh, like I was saying earlier, the uh, the means of deployment. Um, all of these knives here have detents. I'm gonna move everything that doesn't have a detent, right? Detent, 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 like as far as like the traditional detent ball setup. Uh, one of them has a little bit of a different idea. It's more of a lip of uh, titanium, or I, actually I think it might be steel on this. We'll talk about that here in a sec, but how you actually approach it to deploy it can determine how it feels. And I mean, if you guys haven't picked up on this, the truth is, is that the term perfect detent is not a universal term. There are terms like heavy or light detent that a lot of people will agree on. A lot of people who have handled a lot of different knives in that category. For example, titanium frame lock flippers. There are a lot of people who have handled a lot in this world who will tell you generically, this model from this manufacturer tends to have a heavier detent than this model from this manufacturer. But it definitely, you know, th there are so many variables. One being the um, deployment mechanism, uh, the size of your hand, how much experience you have. Oh, I mean, like truthfully, uh, you know, if you've been flipping a lot of knives and if you're, you're dom like my dominant hand's my right hand, this finger is a lot stronger than it used to be. And it's definitely a lot stronger than the uh, index finger on my left hand, right? So is my thumb from deploying thumb stud openers. Another thing that can affect how you feel about that or how people describe it is the positioning of the deployment uh, uh, mechanism. So in this case, we have an XM18 three and a half inch and we've got a, a Microtech SOCOM Elite. Uh, the interesting thing here is that the XM18 was originally built as a flipper. It has thumb studs that you can use to deploy the knife, but their primary means uh, their, their primary uh, function is actually as an external stop. They can be used that way, but they're not actually ideally positioned. Um, so when they made the uh, non-flipper version of the XM18, they left the studs in exactly the same place because it's exactly the same knife. It just doesn't have a flipper tab. So it's still in an awkward position in terms of deployment versus like say the SOCOM Elite, which has a thumb stud that I consider to be in an absolutely ideal location. We're gonna talk about why I think that here in a sec. Um, but what they had to do to make sure that people were able to deploy these is lighten up the detent because the, um, the, uh, the, the, the mass consensus is that the Hinder XM18, especially the new triways, they have a pretty heavy detent. And doing this on your XM18 triway uh, using the thumb stud is uh, can be a very frustrating and very painful experience. In fact, I am sort of messing up my the tip of my thumb. Another, another good example is we have um, the steel wheel Sila here. It's actually more of a front flipper. So your engagement with the knife and the detent strength and uh, uh, you know how it, how much force it takes to break that detent is in that case very dependent on the positioning of what you're using to deploy the knife. You're getting a totally different. 
um, point of leverage up here. It's very, very different than using a thumb stud or a flipper tab or something like that. And of course, we also have the thumb hole on the Spyderco knives. It's somewhat similar, I think, to a lot of, um, you know, the way that they describe like a really, really good thumb stud opener. Um, the detent strength is somewhat similar. It's just that the way that you're you're operating it, the way that you're breaking the detent and maybe the angle that you're throwing the blade is different. Um, so that detent might be a little bit might be a little bit different. The way that I define a perfect detent, the way that I judge it, is how much effort do I need to put into the engagement to get the blade to deploy reliably, and how comfortable is it? A lot of elements there, a lot of elements that I covered, and then for whatever reason, you know, well, honestly, it's a totally understandable reason. Um, the uh, the internals of the pivots, uh, you know, are if they're really really smooth, then it sort of adds to that you know, that ease of deployment. Here is a, a great example of an inexpensive knife that has a really, really good detent, you know, considering the size of the item. That's another thing you have to consider is not just the size of your own hand, but the size of the knife. CGRB Rhea is a great example of a knife that is very inexpensive at about 35 to $40. Uh, has a, uh, an, a uh, deployment uh, mechanism or, or deployment method that is positioned um, really, really well considering the size, you know, the average person's hand. And then also considering it's a very small knife. Um, what it's got going for it is it's running on bearings, which of course, as many of you know, helps the knife sort of operate smoothly. Uh, in most cases, it's going to be a little smoother than nylon or phosphor bronze washers. But you can see here, this is my point. This detent, if I'm just feeling it out, honestly, without deploying it, I would say it's kind of a light detent. But because of the way that it's seated and because of the position that you have to, uh, you know, where you're going to engage the thumb stud and the direction that you're going to push it, there's actually the ability to build up enough force to deploy. It's not only there, but it's also really comfortable when you finally release it. This knife is almost effortless. Right here, just a little push, and it's gonna come right out. The detent is almost perfectly tuned for this guy. And I say almost because uh, maybe me as somebody who reviews knives, uh, there's always little nitpicks and things. The XM18 three and a half inch flipper, uh, the triways, truthfully, um, you know, the I've gotten used to these and that's another thing that I want you guys to remember is even if a knife doesn't necessarily have what most people might consider to be a perfect detent right off the bat, we are adaptive beings. You simply will adapt to the things that you want to adapt to. If you really, really like something, then you're probably going to figure it out. <laughs> but, um, you know, a lot of times this feeling is described on this, uh, uh, any individual's first impression. The Hinder XM18 has a flipper tab that is not ideally shaped. It's kind of a hook, it's kind of pointy, but you can see here it was not unintentional. The uh, flipper tab follows the exact curvature of this primary uh, position for your index finger, and that's because it was initially, and, and it still is, meant as a finger guard. If you're working with this knife um, in conditions where you're not really going to be paying attention to where your hand is on the blade, right? Using the non-flipper, you're much more likely to accidentally slip and run your finger up onto the blade. On the flipper version of the knife, it's not likely. It's very, very comfortable where you're engaging that, um, and you're not likely to run your finger up on the blade. But the problem is, is that no matter how perfect the detent is, you're still going to have to deal with that oddly shaped flipper tab. So the detent on the XM18, um, it, not only is it dealing with a, a flipper tab that's not super comfortable, it's also pretty heavy. It's also an exposed frame lock, which means if you accidentally put pressure on this side while you're trying to flip it, oh, it's going to be impossible. How many times have we gone to a retailer, those of us who are XM18 owners you, owners, you go to a retailer and you look at the reviews and there's always one person in there going, I can't even open it. This is a terrible knife. We know that it's because they're probably putting pressure on the frame lock, right? Right on the exposed frame lock, which is pushing that detent ball as deep as possible, creating additional pressure, additional friction inside or between the uh, detent ball and the detent hole. But anyways, if your fingers are positioned correctly, which is, I like to place them right about here on the pocket clip, um, because the pocket clip is actually bracing on the frame. Um, the amount of force that it takes to break the, break the detent is uh, quite a bit, but it'll definitely throw that blade. Absolutely, there's enough power there. It's almost too much power, right? Doesn't necessarily need that much. On the XM18 three and a half inch, I think they did uh, a great job with the detent once you figure out exactly you know you can see here it really doesn't take much effort i can almost not barely just barely move at all is touching the uh, frame lock on, on that one another reason you got to keep your fingers off there but just a little tiny bit of force and getting it in exactly the right uh, direction the problem is is that the um means of deployment is again not optimally placed 
Uh, the Spider Coast Shaman, excellent, excellent detent. Once you uh, kind of figure out the uh, thumb hole there and the, the amount of force it takes to break it, it's great. Um, I think uh, the problem with the Shaman is, is to get it to a point where it's not wiggling, right? You can definitely get these loose enough to where they, they'll deploy so incredibly easily, right? But I've handled a lot of Shamans and they all kind of have the same, like, to get it exactly centered, to get it to not wiggle, right? Um, you kinda, it kind of has to run tight. Some Shaman owners will say, no, you know, mine's running smooth and that's great. But the ones that I've handled, which at this point is a lot, they kind of run a little bit tight. And sometimes what happens is... I go to do this and it kind of does that, right? The Shaman's a great knife and again, I've adapted to it so that really doesn't hardly ever happen unless I use the uh, thumb stud or the uh, the thumb deployment method. If you, do, you use the reverse flick here, you know, yeah, then the Shaman and, you know, other Spydercos like the Spyderco PM2 and the Para 3, which I can do left-handed, right? The D10 is perfectly suited for that operating system or that uh, that deployment method. It's a, that's really something I want to emphasize is that it is... 100% catered to the design and the um, expectations and experience of any individual person. Here's an example of a titanium frame lock. Uh, the, generally, the you know the whole like is the detent light or heavy. It, it originates from you know people's experience with titanium frame lock flippers, which are one of it's one of if not the most popular types of knives in this tier of the knife world. Titanium frame lock flippers that run on bearings. Those are the knives that, that have their detents judged the hardest. Great uh, flipper tab. The shape of it's great. It's easy to engage whether you want to do what's called the push button, where you actually push down sort of this, the bending of the finger and you're building up kin uh, kinetic energy this way. Or you do what's called a light switch. And that's why the it's curved like this so that you can engage it the way you want. And you sort of flip it like a light switch. That's great. Truthfully, it actually kind of has a light detent. Um, and that is, you know, if I'm, if I'm applying as little force as possible to this, trying to fail it, there is actually uh, an amount of force that I can apply that it will make it to where it won't quite come all the way out. And I think the detent on this guy could have been just a little bit heavier, um, but I figured it out. I figured out the exact angle to engage uh, this knife to get it to fire, you know, every single time, right? I've adapted to this, but this, you know, like this guy versus the XM18, um, this knife has a way heavier detent than this. So the way that my, you know, once my muscle memory kicks in, as soon as I pick up the knife and I handle it, I feel out the positions of things, you kind of know, ah, oh, this is that knife that I need to apply X amount of force to to get it to deploy, right? It's just a muscle memory thing. Uh, another great example of a, a one that's got a pretty good detent, um, the, uh, the um, concept uh, Sprite is really good little bit less smooth inside the pivot than some of these other ones the flipper tab is shaped correctly right but again I think there's there's a point where if I get it exactly right there is an amount of force that I can apply to it or makes it not quite want to deploy perfectly right there like that you almost have to pinch it like this and that's fine um, I think what's causing that is probably just a little bit of tightness in the pivot or less smoothness in the pivot versus some of these other uh, knives but the detent itself is very good the flipper tab is good the weight and mass of the blade which also has to do with how how readily the knife deploys right same thing this knife the vdk um uh i'm sorry the the uh, uh mbk vld actually has a detent that's fairly heavy um it is one that i cannot fail it simply is going to deploy every single time it's a heavy detent but the flipper tab is pretty good it's a little bit sharp but it's it's much more comfortable than like on the xm18 no matter how little force i try to apply here the internals are smooth enough, the weight and mass of the blade, you know, there's a lot of mass moving, and there's enough energy being built up on the flipper tab because of that heavier detent or that ball that is, you know, sinking deeper or perhaps larger. Uh, it's just, it's creating more of a connection with that detent hole and creating more friction. It requires more force to get it to break. It's a good detent. The only thing that I have an issue with on this knife is that the flipper tab is just a little tiny bit sharp, right? So the D10 itself on that one, I think, is perfect for the design. Um, I can't fail it. Uh, that's uh, that's the, uh, the the consistency here is, can it fail? Can it be failed? Is there a circumstance because of the, is there a flaw with the design that might allow it to fail, even if the D10 is appropriate? Uh, another example, again, of a perfect D10 on not a flipper, but a thumb stud opener is the Microtech SOCOM Elite. These are large, considering the space you have here where the human hand is likely to engage here. You can see the scallop that's right here. It's obviously meant for a comfortable starting position. It's almost a guide or a sheath for your thumb. Uh, it, it sort of shows you, hey, this is where you're supposed to engage this. 
And you can see there just almost no, putting as little force as possible into that will allow the blade to deploy. Now part of that is again, the amount of space you have to engage the thumb stud. Definitely the weight and mass of the blade on this guy. This is a big, thick blade, right? And also the internals on the SOCOM Elite are incredibly smooth. This will allow you to do the reverse flick with it as I just demonstrated there, which is engaging the um, rear thumb stud or the non-show side thumb stud, right? Perfect, beautiful. It's one of the, I mean, if I was to create a top 10 list of knives that have the most perfect you know, engagement of action, the most perfectly designed uh, deployment uh, mechanism for the um, for, for what it is, then the, yeah, the, so the uh, SOCOM Elite would be on there. Truthfully, the knife that I, you know, all in my collection, a lot of these are mine, some of them aren't. Actually, all of these are mine, except for this one and this one. Some of the knives are sent by manufacturers or, or viewers who are letting me uh, take a look at them for the channel, for anybody who doesn't know. This is the um, uh, Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon uh, that's designed by uh, Brian the Doe and actually made by Riot. Um, this knife, I have never failed. And, uh, you know, when I, um, when I got it, I put just a little tiny, and sometimes, you know, adding a little bit of oil in the pivot can help. You know, it's, it's important to clean your knives out. But when this thing is operating the way that it is supposed to operate, this is a combination of a lot of things. Um, this is actually, you know, Riot's tight tolerances and fit and finish. It is the shape of the flipper tab, which some people don't like. I actually really like this. There's really only one way to engage this flipper tab, and it is comfortable. That one way to do that is comfortable. This version of the knife is not necessarily an exposed frame lock. It's kind of a sub frame lock under an overlay. And so where I like to brace, right, right here on top of the overlay and partially on the pocket clip means that there's no excess pressure being put on that, uh, that frame lock. So I'm not creating any unnecessary heaviness in the detent, right? It also has a bit of a different system inside here. Instead of a detent ball, I'm trying to see if I can, let me, let me hold the flashlight with my right hand. Um, the, uh, the setup or what's actually creating the detent is more of a lip. You can see that up there, that little lip that's actually engaging. Uh, that's it, it. There's no detent ball. It's just a, uh, it's just sort of a lip that's, um, it's, it's just angled just right to act sort of as it's kind of mimicking what you feel in a detent, but it's allowing the tang to slide off there at exactly the right angle. The amount of force that's needed uh, to break it, right? It's just exactly right. This knife, I cannot fail. It's not necessarily fall shut. You'll notice that, right? Um, just It's just every all of those little things working together. No matter how little force I apply to it, just, yeah, you can't, right? Even if you go straight up with your thumb. I even caught the blade a little bit there with my pinky. Straight up with your thumb. It's simply going to flip every single time. So... If, where you engage it, right? Is it comfortable and obvious? Um, pushing down on this, right? No matter how little force you can apply to it, does it throw the blade, right? And then of course, a lot of other factors are you able to engage if there is an exposed frame lock, is the weight and mass of the blade uh, something that's gonna work well with the smoothness of the internals of the pivot. So there's a lot of different elements. But again, it's really gonna be left up to the individual to decide. And even if it's not perfect, even if everybody around you is going, nah, I don't know, the detent on that one's not really perfect, I don't know, and then you still wanna get it and you get it, and then it's, you're like, yeah, they're right, it's really not perfect. If you keep carrying it and using it, your hands are gonna figure out, your hands are gonna to adapt to the tool, right? And it's gonna become second nature. I've got a lot of knives that are kind of like that, um, and I've just figured it out. I remember getting the Rat 1 originally and thinking, I don't really like how the thumb studs feel. I don't like the placement of them. It's not the smoothest knife in the world, but you know what? I've gotten used to it and it works. So it's an adaption process, right? The most perfect detents, I think, are going to be the uh, detents on knives that um, speak to a wide audience of people that are just basically effortless, even if it's just your first experience with a knife. Um, like I said, great examples, the Evo Typhoon, the Microtech SOCOM Elite, um, and like in this case, the uh, MBK VLD, um, some spider codes are great. Some of the, and in the less expensive range, you know, CJRB uh, really seems to have that figured out. Most of the time, you're going to get a pretty darn good detent, no matter what it is you pick up in this knife world. Um, you know, in, in the good parts of knife world, I understand that's kind of confusing, but if you're looking at brands like CJRB, Civivi, uh, Bestec, right, and you're looking at Benchmade, Spyderco, ZT, and kind of the mid to high range, or you're looking at Chris Reeve, uh, you're looking at, well, Chris Reeve's not a great example, it's a different kind of thing, right, because we're talking about actually throwing the blade or launching the blade out. Uh, Rick Hinder, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these brands are all going to have good detents. We fortunately live in a time period in the knife world where this kind of stuff has been figured out. And truthfully, pretty good, 
is really all that matters. If it's good enough to where you know you can kind of figure out by yourself how to get it exactly right and make it work for you, then that's all that's required. Not every single knife has to have an absolutely perfect detent or a universally perfect detent that will work perfectly every single time for every single you know person out there. Um, that's that that would be almost impossible. I mean, I'm sure there are still people who complain about the SOCOM Elite, but probably not nearly as many uh, than who uh, complain about the XM18. I hope that this was somewhat clarifying. I hope that this was helpful for some people. <laughs> like I said, I'm rambly. I don't like to do the editing thing. I just like to kind of talk. Um, in any case, um, I hope that this was this was you know helpful for some people. That was the main goal there. Um, like I said, many of these knives can be found in links right down in the description. It would be great if you wanted to use those, but if not, that's fine too. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex. I'll go right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.